Good day, my crafting along buddies. This is Jennifer with Just Crafting Along. Welcome to my channel. Guess what day it is? That's right, it's Thermal Cinch Day. Today I have a very easy project for everyone to do. Nice and easy. We're going to take this big bulky planner and turn it into something small. You can see how big these rings are. We're going to get rid of these tiny little ringlets even though they're adorable and I love it. We're going to turn this cute little binder into something a little bit easier. I have a friend who just started a small business and when I was doing my small business and carrying around my crates these little binder tips would not fit in my crates and when I had it in my computer bag it was leaving marks in my computer or my papers so we're going to do away with these cute little inserts now I do have let me get it out for you I'm not saying I'm not killing the vibe on the whole happy planner because I just bought myself a nice big planner to keep at home. This is going to be my home planner. This is where I put all my stuff in for my filming, um, all my information for the things I want to do. This is my binder for at home and I absolutely love it. I cannot take this cutie anywhere with me because she is big. She's got these big bulky things and she takes up a lot of room in my bag. So we are going to keep her at home and we are going to turn her into this. So let's get started on that. I just wanted to let you know that you can keep your binders, but we're gonna make something small that's easy to carry. And I think this would do really good for the person I have in mind. I think she would, um, it will work out very well to have something that's sleek on the sides, nothing poking out. She can tuck it in her crates and carry on with her business and it would be easy to do. And she doesn't have to think, oh my God, did I grab my calendar? Did I grab my contact book? She will have it all tucked into her product bins and it'll be ready to go with her business. So we're going to go ahead and get started and all I did was pick up a refill packet for my Happy Planner from Hobby Lobby. I did get this here in my Hobby Lobby haul. That video is in my content if you want to see. I did pick up several of these. Um, I think this one was either regular $11.99, $8.99 or $6.99 and I got it for $2.99. So I'm not for sure there was no price on the back of this one or on the envelope. It was just $2.99. So this is what the content looks like. It's basically just a big calendar that she fills all of her information information in on. Um, if you want to skip a month you can. If you want to put certain months in. Maybe you only work from May to September for your craft shows. You could just put those months in there in any contact information. It has these cute dividers that are inspirational. Um, it does come with some stickers. and So let me go ahead and get rid of this. I did add a few things to this packet. I did add my own um, folder but you can find um, insert packets refills that have these folders in there. I did add this folder just because it came with sticker sheets and when binding your stuff you have to put it in and it's going to cover up these stickers right here. So I didn't want her to lose the stickers and I had no other way to attach them other than giving her a folder which I think is really really cute. So we put the folder in there. We put a couple extra things in there. It says to-do list. Um, I did get that at my Hobby Lobby haul. And I also did get these debt payoff trackers. So we're gonna put this together. And you can do up to 1.4 inches in your machine. And you will see this is kind of thick, so we're not gonna use any of our spines that came with our book, and I'll show you why. We're gonna be making our own spine today. Um, so you will need your refill packet or any papers that you want to use just in case you're using this video as a template to get started, encouragement to get started. I do encourage you to get started. Um, go grab yourself some scrap papers, maybe another calendar that you're using, and we're going to put it all together. You're also going to need a 12 by 12 cardstock. This is textured cardstock. It's lightweight. It's not very thick. That's why we're going to be using some cardboard. Um, this is, again, textured 12 by 12 cardstock. This is gonna be regular regular weight, um, lightweight, regular cardstock from Michaels. Um, it is cream colored, it's an eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna be using this for the outside of the front and back cover. And this I'm gonna be using on the inside front and back cover. I'm gonna be using cardboard on each back just to kind of give it some stability because this is very, very um, flimsy cardstock. So I've learned from my other ones. I did do another video on um, a book I made that's kind of really flimsy without the cardboard. So we're front and back cover. This is what it's gonna look like. I've already done one and this is what the front or the inside is gonna look like. So this is gonna be the outside front cover 
or a back cover. I'm not for sure which, which one. And this is going to be the inside. So we're going to be doing that today. We're also going to be cutting our cardstock. So we're going to be using our leftover cardstock for our bind, for our spine and the side panels. So don't throw anything away. If you ever cut anything off, do not throw anything away because you'll probably use it. We are also going to be using our glue strips from our kit. My kit did come with glue strips. I am almost out. These are thermal cinch glue strips. You can find thermal glue strips and from other brands out in the market. I do not know if We Are Makers has any back in stock yet. I did get my thermal cinch from HSN and these glue strips were included in my kit. And as you can see, they're almost gone. So I'm going to have to do some research and get um, some more glue strips because I'll probably use all my glue strips today for this project. Today on my cover, I'm going to be using um, Maj Podge instead of double-sided adhesive because this kind of made it a little bit thicker. Like it kind of made it more um, sturdy. So I'm going to use Maj Podge today. It worked very well with the cover I've already made. This aside, you said, Jennifer, your kit came with um, spines already. This is cut down to a quarter of an inch and we are well at... Uh, so we're gonna be making our own spine today and using our own glue. So let's get started on some of that. So in order to um, make our cover, all I did was measure my paper and I cut it down. And I measured my paper. My did was I cut mine a little bit bigger and I want my cardboard. I cut my cardboard down to the actual size. As you can see, it covers very well. So my cardboard is the same, same as my insert. So this is going to be my spine and this is where my cardboard is going to go. So see it lines up very well. So I cut my cardboard the same width as my spine, but I, when I laid it on my 12 by 12 paper, I left a border because I'm going to be wrapping this border over top of this. So we're going to have to score right here. That's why it's marked. We're going to have to do some scoring. And then I also, this one, I put the paper on the outside. And I'm going to do the same thing, but you can put the paper on the inside and fold your purple on top, or we're going to fold our purple on top inside first and then put our cream color on the outside. So all I did was put my cardboard in the middle of my paper. I cut it. It's a little bit bigger. So it's 10 inches high and it's eight and a half inches wide. And that's just going to give me a little border to fold in. So all I'm going to do is use my Maj Podge and cover the back of my cardstock. And you can see I've already made my lines and I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and score that now before I do my Maj Podge. That way I can just kind of fold as I go. So you're going to need also a um, paintbrush. You will need a paintbrush for this. So if I had lost anybody yet, <laughs> all I did was cut my 12 by 12 paper down to 10 inches high and eight and a half inches wide. I cut my cardboard down to nine and a quarter, I think it is, nine and a quarter by seven and a half inches. So nine and a half quarter high and seven and a half inches wide. So this gives us just a little tiny border. And all I did was take a little pencil, I put it where I wanted it. I took a pencil and went around the edges. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna score here, here, here and here using the we are memory keeper scoreboard so let me go ahead and and all i'm going to do is line up this line right even with a score line and that should be perfect right there all I'm going to do is score it. You want your marks on the inside because we're going to be scoring that. We want those marks to kind of disappear. So there's that. And then we're going to line this one up right wherever you want as long as you can run your score tool across it. And it doesn't have to be right on the line. That was just kind of a guideline. We want enough to fold over. And we're going to run this one down here. And then we're gonna run this one down right here. And that gives us a nice score line so we can go ahead and bend that over top of our, our um, cardboard. And I'm just gonna go over it one more time. And you do wanna be careful because textured cardstock will kind of rip. And depending on how, what color, you, if you have solid core or white core, you will leave white marks too, or it will just rip. And I can be honest with you, I've never made a book cover like this. And all I did was take my scissors 
and I just cut this away right here and I'm gonna fold it on top of itself. So we're just gonna cut these four corners out and this is just gonna give us that, um, it's gonna be able to fold on top of each other. So we're just gonna cut this out. And this is gonna be covered up by that cream paper. And I've already cut my cream paper down also. My cream paper is the same size as my, oops. My cream paper is the same size as my um, book. So we want that to be the same size. So I'm not doing cutting on camera today, but you can go ahead and cut everything down because your sizes might be a little different. Again, my size for my actual cover is 10 inches high by eight and a half inches wide. My cardboard is nine and a quarter, maybe nine, maybe nine and a half, nine and a half by seven and a half. So that's why I had that cute little border. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a nice little bend with my hand. I'm going to put this up right here, put this against the edge and we're just going to bend it along that edge just to kind of give it that nice crease. So when we go to fold it, when we have our glue on, it will fold. So let's go ahead and do that. And you don't have to have each side perfect as long as it folds over and gives you that overlap because you don't want the, um, I made another book and I did not overlap my cover. So my bottom, you can see the cardboard and you can see the cardboard on the top and you can see the cardboard on the side. So we're eliminating that by folding it over this way. So we're going to give it a nice, cute, solid um, overhang so you can't tell that there's cardboard underneath you're gonna think it's just a hard covered book so we're gonna do that and today I'm going kind of plain I'm using her logo colors I am NOT going to attach her logo on there but it's gonna be just a purple little um, notebook with some planner stuff inside of it and I will add her um, logo on later so you might want to get yourself a mat or something that you can clean up after because this is going to get kind of messy. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and it can be any cardboard. This is old cardboard of mine. I'm going to go ahead and lay it down my paper. And we are going to go ahead and mod podge this. I'm just going to kind of, I hate to say, soak it. Um, this I got for $1.25 at, um, actually I got it when it was still a dollar at the Dollar Tree, but you can get these up for $1.25 at the Dollar Tree, and it's a good size, it's a two, um, two full ounces, so it's a good size for $1.25. So we're going to go ahead and put that on, and all I'm going to do is use my paintbrush, and I'm just going to go to all the way to these edges, and I'm going to go ahead and just smear all this around, and we want this goopy, we want this as goopy as possible. We want this wet. We want the sides wet. We want all of it wet. What I did was put um, something heavy on top of it because it does kind of curve a little bit when it's wet. But all I did was put something heavy on top of it. So now I'm just going to put it right in this little tiny crease, right in those little marks. And I'm going to try to get it as even as possible. And I have a little bit of wiggle room. There we go. We got it. We have a little bit of wiggle room and you can tell where you kind of don't have any glue. So we just wanna go ahead and lay that down. If you feel like you need more glue, just go ahead and give it some more glue. And we're just gonna lay that right over top. That's gonna go there. There we go. You're going to have a little bit of bowing because it's wet. So we're just going to put something heavy on it while we do all of our other stuff. You just want to make sure that this has a little bit of glue. So if you see that any parts are puckering up and it's not staying down, just give it a little bit more glue. There we go. Just that. There we go. Sometimes when it's a little too wet, it won't be tacky. So it takes a few minutes to get for it to get tacky. So I'm just going to kind of watch. Just that. And we're going to be putting glue on this, this back side anyway. So we're going to be putting more glue down for our other cover. Let me give it a little bit of right here so it has something to do right here too. 
I used to use Maj Paj all the time when I first started crafting. And then I kind of switched over to glue sticks. I say it a lot in my video. I, I love glue sticks. Um, and then I kind of switched over to double-sided adhesive. Um, just because sometimes it was easy to do in place than having glue that was wet. So um, I kind of switched a little bit. But here we go. So what we're going to do before we put our other cover on, I'm going to go ahead and put something heavy on top of this. My book on top of it. And then that on top of it. So we're going to let that dry for a second. So that is our covers. This is the front. I'm sorry. This is the front. And this is the inside of the front. If you're going to be doing this after watching this video, I would suggest to fold the top in and the bottom in and then fold the two sides on top of that to give you that cleaner look and you wouldn't have this line right here. It would be covered up by the inside serves. So these are our front and back covers. They turn out very well. Oh, look how sturdy they are. I think the Maj Paj makes a very big difference. So very sturdy. So the next thing we have to do now is we have to figure out our spine. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my spine a little bit thicker. So I want a two and a half spine long, two and a half spine, an inch on the front panel, an inch on the back panel, and a quarter, or I'm sorry, half of an inch in the middle for my actual spine and my glue. Because this is only um, a half of an inch wide. So that's what's giving it a little bit of room to breathe. It's only a half of an inch. So I only need a half of an inch of a glue strip. So I need my spine to be two and a half. So I cut my spine down to, this is going to be my spine in the middle and it's also going to be my sides that come up over top of my book. So I cut that down to two and a half inches wide and nine and a half inches long. Um, so nine and a half inches in the height and two and a half inches wide. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to score these before I attach them because it would be easier to attach them to my book and put my glue strips in if I go ahead and score this. But I am doing three papers wide just to give it that extra um, thickness because this paper will rip if I just leave it alone. After a time it will wear and it will kind of give. So I'm going to go ahead and um, score these. So one inch here, one inch here, and then it will leave me a, a, a half an inch in the middle. That's my, that's my head thinking. So I'm hoping <laughs> we will see how this turns out. But I think that's right. So we're going to go ahead and score at one inch. If not, we will start over. So we're going to score at one inch right here. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to score at an inch again. And that is going to leave me my spine in the middle. See that spine? That should be a half of an inch and I'm going to have a one inch border on each side. So I'm going to score these ones the same way and then we're going to, to put it together. So that's why I have double sided adhesive on this side and this side. Once I score each one, I'm going to put it together. So let me go over that again. This is a two and a half inch spine that's wide and it's nine and a half inches high. I'm going to score at one inch. I'm going to flip my paper and I'm going to score again at one inch. And this little valley right here is where our glue strips are going to fall. And our book should just be the inside of our book, not our cover. The inside of our book should fit right in that glue. So perfect. So now that I got my spine sculpted, it's on three layers thick and, and I'm going to put the other side. This adhesive that we're putting right here, this is double sided adhesive. This is going to stick to your cover. This side is going to stick to your cover. This glue is what's going to bind your book together. This is going to bind your pages together. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish putting on our glue strips. And then again, this is just the glue strips from the We Are Makers Thermal Cinch bundle that I got from HSN. So let me go ahead and put this on there. This might be a little thick on the side, but that's okay. We'll, we'll make it work. I could have cut it down a little bit more, but we're not going to. We're just going to, we're going to make it work. So we're going to put that one in there. And then this one is going to finish it out. Might need to be cut just a little bit. I'm going to cut just a little bit off right here at the bottom. There we go. Perfect. We're just going to take the backing off. There is a white backing on the back. It's a, it's a, a, like a little liner that you just peel off. 
And this is what's sticky. So we're going to stick this right to our um, cardstock. We're going to put it flush right next to the one beside it. So that's going to do our glue strip. Now I also want to, you're going to have to find out which way is the front and which way is the back. I want this to be my front. So let me bend it just a little bit more because I got a little bit of a glue strip in there. So we're just going to fold it. So that's where our book is going to lay right there. That's where your spine is. That little valley right there, that's where all that glue strip is. And that's what's going to bind your book together. This um, section on the side is what adheres your spine to your cover. So we are going to make this our front. So this is going to be our back. So what I did was I took a ribbon and I'm going to be putting your ribbon in here and I want it to lay out to about right here. Outside of our book, I want it to overhang about right that much. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip this around. And this is going to go on the inside. So all we're going to do is we're going to, when we take this off right here, we're going to just see how I did that. <laughs> Told you I don't do math. <laughs> so all I did was, so in order to make our book, um, Mark is just plain old ribbon, um, regular ribbon. This one's kind of thick, but I want it thick. So all I did was snip it and I want it to hang out. This is going to be the, basically our book cause our cover is going to go here. I'm just going to lay this down for visual. Our cover is going to go here. So our book mark needs to hang out to right here. So all I'm going to do is take right to about here. Now is flip it. So now all I got to do is to hear this to here and that will be our ribbon that goes outside of our book. So if we put our book down right here like this to this edge, this edge, and if we fold it down, this is how much our bookmark will stay out. So let's go ahead and do that right now while we're, we're here doing it. So all I'm going to do is keep it right here. I'm going to fold that up and all I'm going to do is release this lining right here. And then I'm just going to put this ribbon right along this back side right here. And then I'm going to keep on going down until it adheres. So we're going to put that there. I'm also going to put another piece of double sided adhesive over top of this ribbon just to hold it in place. So I know it's secured and I know it's not going to go anywhere. I do not put my ribbon on my glue strips. I put it on the back so it lays flat and it's not curved. Tape from here. So now that ribbon is very secure. It's not going to go nowhere. I'm going to put this back over top of it because we're still working and I don't want anything to get stuck. So we're going to put that back on top. So our ribbon to our book is complete. Now we have to put double sided adhesive on this side of our binder or our spine. And all I'm going to do is push that there. And I'm going to do, hopefully it will fit. And we're just going to run that right alongside here. And that is secured. So that is our spine with a bookmark. So this is what it's going to look like. And I'm going to trim this off here in a second. That's just double sided adhesive. And then this is going to flip over like this and be our bookmark. So let me go ahead and trim this off. I think I'm going to do it with my exacto knife. So right down the side right here. And that will leave me a clean, there we go. Okay, so now it's time to put our book together and then warm up our cinch. So that was super easy. You want to make sure that all your double-sided adhesive is kind of flat and it's it's on there because your 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 covers are going to stick to the side of that. So let me find my covers. So usually what I do is I'll put my book together, make sure everything is good, make sure that all this is down here like this. But today. I'm going to do my cover first. This is my back cover and all I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up right here and then I'm going to release that backing and I'm going to put my cover on. I want to secure my covers because my covers are big and bulky and I don't want to um, disturb the pages at all. So hopefully this will work. I've never done it like this. First time for everything. 
So I think it's a little work. Um, never know until you try. If worst thing we have to do is start all over, which would be really sad, but doable. So that's done. That's on. So now this is our back cover. So now all we're going to do is push this down and make sure it's it's completely stuck. Give it a good mush. And we're just going to fold this over like this and make sure that this is good still. And it is. So we just want to mold that spine. So we're going to fold that open. And we're going to do the same thing with this side, which is a little scary for me because I don't have my papers in there. I've never done it like this, so this is the first time I'm ever doing this. So, I'm, so this is nice and tight. This is good. I'm going to go ahead and release this right here, my double-sided adhesive um, release paper. I'm going to go ahead and release that backing, but there you got it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my cover on this side too. I'm going to hold my book up and I'm going to line it up right even with that glue strip so it kind of goes in together. And then we're going to give it a good press. And that is our cover. That looks great. So let me go ahead and close it. We're going to mold it a little bit more because we want to make sure that this, these papers are going to stick in there. Look at how good that looks so far. And what I mean by the ribbon being on the back side, have you ever had a ribbon that is over here on the side and it's kind of wonky, you try to fold it and it's got like a crease in it? This won't have a crease in it. It's just gonna go straight down. So I like put them on the back cover just for that reason. So let's fold that out so we make sure that it stays there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get out our paper holder. And this is my own. It does come with it, um, the, Thermal Cinch does come with a um, paper clip, but it's a very small paper clip and my, my bundle is a little bit heavier and a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna use my own paper clip. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that all these papers, including this folder, are completely together. I want them all down here. If they're not all down here and flush right here, they will not adhere together and you'll have a page that falls out. So we are going to do our best to get it all so just like a deck of cards, just kind of let, let it kind of move your hands about and let it kind of fall down and let it all that go down to the bottom. Look at this. I'm going to do this again because my bottom doesn't look good right here. See how this, there's something out right here. So let me go ahead and do this again. Run my fingers along the bottom. Tap, tap, tap. Lots of tapping. So you want to double check this a million times if you can. Um, just to make sure that everything is good. Right there. You're good. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to look. Everything looks flushed. It looks good. All my papers look like they're down there. I'm going to go ahead and clip it here. And then we are good. I'm going to give it one more tap. I'm going to look. Everything looks straight here. Everything looks like it's here. I'm going to line it up on my glue right here. I'm going to double check this. I'm going to close my book. I'm going to double check this just to make sure that we are in there. Oh, we are perfect. So you can see right here that my glue is going to fit perfectly right there. You can see all the glue, all the pages are in. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to tap this one more time and then um, I'm going to even it out a little bit before I put it in my thing. So now that I put my book on, my spine is buckling a little bit. So I see what happened right here is I had to put some more double-sided adhesive because my my ribbon is not have enough tape on it. So this is easy fix. Just be careful when peeling it. So there's no glue right here, so it's not sticking right here. So I need to put double-sided adhesive along this whole entire strip of um, ribbon so there's adhesive for it to stick to. That's why it was puckered. Easy fix. So. Always examine everything before you go ahead and put it down. I'm just gonna put a whole another strip of this double-sided adhesive. I got it from a craft, um, a scrapbooking fair, um, like a like a like a big expo where all the crafting people go, and um, it was the best 
double sided adhesive I've ever gotten. It is so good. So there, that, here we go. Okay, so now we're gonna fold. We're gonna put this back in there where it goes. We're gonna fold this up. We're gonna make it taut. And then we're just gonna fold this down. There we go, now it's working. There we go. Easy, easy, easy fix. Put my papers back in here. I'm gonna give them a good tap. So now I'm gonna do is slide this in my book. I'm gonna put it right on top, right here, right where I want it. Even with the bottom, we are. Even with the top, I'm gonna give it a little scooch up. There we go, and I'm gonna fold this in. Still on my glue. Make sure that all my papers are on my glue. Tap, tap, tap. Even, 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 even. Okay, now we gotta turn our thermal cinch on. Turn on your thermal cinch. You can see all that glue is gonna line up perfect with all these papers. So there, our, our cinch is ready. We are going to go ahead and open up the door. I'm gonna pull it close to me. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a push. And be careful with your papers because your papers will kind of fray. So now I'm gonna do is give it a good push. Give this a, another good push. We're gonna let it melt a little bit. So I'll be back in two minutes after it melts. Okay, so it's all done. And all we're gonna do is take it out. While it's still warm, we're gonna give it a good push on our counter or on your tabletop. And we're just gonna kind of swish it down a little bit and give it like a firm pressure, just a firm push. Not too hard because you don't want the glue to come out the edges. But we wanna make sure, look how good that glue is. Oh, that worked great. So we wanna make sure that it works really good. And then we're gonna put it back here for five minutes. So we're gonna put it back on the cooling rack for five minutes. And then I'll be back. So why we have our book in our cooling rack, I wanna go over a few tips with you. A uh, main thing is when you're getting ready to put your glue on, you wanna make sure that your glue is very close together and that it's the width of your pages. You want your, your pages to fall right in that line of glue. So you wanna do a little bit of measuring and you wanna get that glue in that valley. And um, not only in that valley of the score lines, you wanna also have your book fall in that valley also. Tapping before you put your um, book together before you actually put it in the cinch You want to tap and you want to make sure that all those papers are down together If you find out that you have a loose paper Reheat it and see if it will stick again um, A lot of people and don't open it I see a lot of people will open it right away to see if it worked You can crack it open a little bit, but you want to give time for that glue to cure you want to make sure that glue gets solid it stays warm for a very very long time um, when you pull your book out give it a good firm rub back and forth and like maybe a push even on top right here give it a good push you want to make sure all that glue gets in all those pages and hardens so you want to be able to open your book later i don't open my books for another 24 hours i'll crack it open here in a second but i let my glue here for a good 24 hours before i crack my book all the way open this is the last book that I did. I had two pages fall out and that was my fault because I cut it kind of wonky. You can see right here where I cut it wonky. So those are the only pages that fell out. I am able to open this book all the way without no problems. I don't have any pages falling out. Um, I'm able to lay this down completely. I did let this cool for one whole day. You can see that my glue is nice and tight right here. Um, you can see that my Pages are all the way in there. I don't have any problems. Everything is aligned very well. Um, so this one turned out very, very good. Um, this was the last one I did. I did a video on that one. This is the very first book that I made and it's holding up very, very well. It's even a curved spine right here. Um, so I didn't know how well it would work with it being curved pages. I also have a video. This is the first video that I did for my cinch. So you can go ahead and look at that one and how I did it. Um, I did do it with cardboard backing also. I'm gonna open this to the second page because there is writing on the first page. Um, in this book, what I'm doing is I'm actually tearing the pages out. Um, so 
they they stuck very well for being my first one i don't have any problems i don't have any pages poking out i'm able to open it and write in it this is where i write my time stamps and how i edit this is my editing book so i it's very it's done very very well and i think the key to that is because i let that glue cure i did not open it and break that seal i let this cure for a day um this is another book i made with it and it it too is, I don't have any problems with it. I'm able to open my book completely flat. I don't have any pages coming out. Um, I don't have any problems with it. This one I actually did push down. That's how I learned. Um, it wasn't, um, my pages weren't all the way in the glue. So I was like, what if I just push really hard on it? And I was pushing that glue in there because it was kind of humped and it worked very, very well after I pushed the glue. So I kind of taught myself how to push the glue down. So that's my tricks and tips. Um, if you have a page that's not in there all the way, I suggest to kind of pull it out if you can um, or reheat your book and try to get that page to kind of tap, tap, tap while your glue is kind of hot and see that page will fall down in there. But my main thing is not open your book until at least, at least I would say 12 hours if you can. I know we're all curious to make sure they worked, but that is my um, tips on that. This is the other book that I made with um, a my very first um, mark. And this one also is doing very well. Um, this one's going to my auntie, so there's a message in the cover. This one's also doing very well, and I think that's because I let it cure overnight before I opened it. Um, I did do a bookmark. So I do mine on the back panel right here. So all everything looks very, very well. Um, everything looks good. The only thing I do find is if you use cardstock that is not thick and durable just in when you go to put your book in those little knobbies down there that little v that's kind of clumped it kind of hurts your paper a little bit so just be careful with that be mindful with that this one held up very well going inside and this is very thin cardstock so i think if you use thicker cardstock it will work better but um let me see if this is definitely cool though now if i didn't just kill it but this looks very solid it looks like it's going to hold very very well um like i said i'm going to probably put something very heavy on it just because i had those um hooks in there and it looks like it bowled my pages a little bit but it looks like it, it held very very well i'm like so this turned out really really good for being a hardcover and like i said i will open it tomorrow <laughs> Um, when I edit this video, you guys will know, but you're not going to know until tomorrow. And this is our done project. Hopefully, I've answered all your questions. Hopefully, you guys will get out your sense and try to get it to work for you. Um, it's take some practice. I have not had a problem with any of my books. They've all stayed together. They've all adhered very well together. They all... Um, I've only had two pages fall out. And like I said, actually three. I'm sorry. I had one page fall out of this one. Um, my very first book I made, I had one page fall out and then my workbook, this one, I had two pages fall out, but it's because I cut them funny and there was no glue. There was, it wasn't even close to the glue. I cut them kind of crooked and there was no glue on them. So they weren't stuck because of my technique. It was because I didn't cut them right. So hopefully I've answered all your questions. Hopefully you, you can get out your cinch and do some fun projects. Good day, my crafts and long buddies. Welcome back. Um, today has been 24 hours. We're about two hours shy. So it's been about 22 hours since we did our book. Everything with the book looks great. The bookmark looks good. I did have something heavy on it overnight. So that worked out really well. You can see that there's a little bit of bowing, but it's not because of the book itself or what we did. It's definitely because of this little folder that I put in there. So I think next time I put a folder in, I'm gonna make the spine a little bit bigger just to allow for that excess folder. Um, it wants to be big. It wants to be a big, big folder. So it wants to take up a lot of room. So that is the only thing that is happening right now with our book. Everything else looks great. Um, it opens very good. You can see that this is glue did run over a little bit, so I did have extra room, um, but it looks really, really good. Um, it adhered very, very well. Um, I'm not gonna crack it all the way open, but I could. I'm gonna let her go ahead and crack it open like her very first book. So it looks very, very good. It's very, it's in there very good. Um, I don't have any pages that wanna come out. So again, only thing that I would change on this would be and this is my first time doing a hardcover with 
Maj Paj. So, and it worked out very good. Um, the only thing I would change is I would give extra room for this folder. Um, this folder is what's making the book pop open. But other than that, um, it looks really, really good. It's solid. My bookmark will go ahead and go right in the front. Actually, I'm going to tuck that in the first page. That will go in there. I'm going to put her logo on it, and then that will be all done. It will be a gift for her. Um, the only tips I do have, again, are to when you first put your book together um, and you line it up with your spine, you want to tap those papers hard on the surface. You want to get all those papers down to the glue. You want to make sure that your glue strip is big enough to hold big enough to hold all your papers and you want to make sure that your um this looks really good actually that actually looks really good so you want to make sure that your glue strip is big enough to hold all your papers and you want to give it a good firm push on the table right like this when you're done when it's starting to cool but even my spine looks good the only negative that i have about the thermal cinch is those cute little tiny um like the little slats that you have to slide this into, it tears up my paper. It does not matter what kind of book I put in there. Those little slats are so tight that they tear up my paper. The only paper I don't have a problem with is the binding paper that comes with it. So I'm going to do a little bit more research and see what kind of paper that it uses, um, like you can use, but it does tear up my paper a little bit when I put it through those little grooves. So that's my only complaint, and it's not really even a complaint. It's just something I'm going to have to learn to adapt to. So... This is our finished project. I hope you guys enjoyed what you saw today. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, lots of love, and I'll see y'all soon. Thank you for watching, my Craft Along Buddies. If you loved what you saw today, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, lots of love, and see you soon.